So how do you embrace the childlike qualities that we have hidden inside of ourselves when we are in our 50s and inundated with responsibility and typical stressors along with anything else that might be going on in our lives, whether that's work or nearing retirement or the loss of a loved one or um, neurodivergence, how, how do we find and get ourselves back to the fun, the silliness, the lightheartedness that we innately have inside of ourselves? And another question is, where does that go? <laughs> where does it go when we, when we grow up? And why does it so indefinitely, I don't know if that's the right word, why does it get replaced? It seems like it's just a, a, to be expected that our silliness and our need for fun and excitement and change and silliness gets replaced with all of the mundane. <clears throat> um, if you're here for answers, I don't have answers. <laughs> this is literally just a top of my head discussion because it's what's on my mind today. So I'm sitting in the park right now where I tend to come when I'm feeling restless. I come here because I want to be around energy. I feel like with the mun mundaneness, mundacity, <laughs> mundane areas of my life, work, home, cook dinner, shower, pay bills, go to sleep, that um, I'm, I'm losing energy and I'm losing drive. And that's not what I want for my life. I want to be having the energy to experience all that there is to do. So one thing that I do is I come here and I sit and I try to absorb the energy of nature and of the people and of the frolicking dogs end of the sun. Um, it, it at least gets me out of my out of my state of um, restlessness. Now I don't know if this is something that's just happening with me or if this is something that goes on with all women in midlife. Um, I suspect that everybody feels this to some degree. And if that's true for you, if you're feeling a lack of excitement or energy, let me know in the comments because I'd like to engage with you on that and get some insight. Um, and some of you watching I know are not women. <laughs> um, but still, is, is this happening to you if you're a guy, if you don't associate with either being a woman or a man? Is this happening to you also? Is this an age thing or is this just a me thing? And the reason why I ask that is because um, I've, I've kind of had these thoughts for a large portion of my, of my own existence. And it makes me wonder if I'm always going to be struggling to have, uh, to, to find those fun things, those fun parts of myself and of life. I wonder because as I'm uncovering my neurodivergence, my neurodivergent self, I, I'm, I, I'm by no means an expert in being neurodivergent and having autism and ADHD because I'm just finding this out about myself. Um, it's still all new to me. But I, I wonder if it has to do with the fact that I, because I've always been in my head, I've always been a very internally focused person, that I find it hard to connect with, with things outside of me. So I, I really want to. I really want to connect with experiences and activities that are, that are light and easy and fun. But my tendency is to go 
to deep, not necessarily dark, but like deep exploratory avenues of self. And although it's really interesting, it can, it can get tiring to always be um, wondering and seeking and searching for answers to things. So um, I'd like to know from any of you if you have similar experiences. If you are neurodivergent, if you do, um, if you are autistic, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? I even struggle sometimes because I just want to make like fun and silly videos and that's hard for me. <laughs> it's hard for me because I don't innately have that um, I don't have that there's a woman walking here in the park with about 10 little pugs with fluffy tails following behind her now, I don't want to film her because that would make her uncomfortable but when she walks past uh, hopefully I can get a little shot of how silly and adorable this looks. See, that's the kind of fun that I'm talking about. I would love to be leading a pack of little happy, bouncy, fluffy dogs through a park. I don't think I would want to live with that many dogs, but I wouldn't mind just having the experience of having them follow me. This is really adorable. So I'll give you a shot of it as she walks by in a moment. Tell me that that wasn't the cutest thing that you've ever seen in your whole entire life. That made me smile. Absolutely smile. In considering ha trying to bring more fun into my life, um, I've been like forcing myself. Forcing is a bad word because it sounds like I'm doing it against my will, but I don't mean forcing in that way. I mean, forcing because it's not a natural inclination for me to seek out fun so i'm pushing myself there you go that's better i'm challenging myself to seek out more fun experiences and a more light-hearted silly representation of myself um because i've been missing that so that said I went to the thrift store today um, after an appointment I had in the morning, and the sole purpose was to find some um, accessories for my home that will liven it up. Uh, right now our home is very cluttered because I'm in complete burnout and don't have any desire to clean up or put things away. But my intention is that um, once I start getting everything put back and back in order, um, I want to bring some quirkiness and some mm, visual stimuli uh, into, into the home and some color. So uh, I was at the thrift store today and I, it, was, it was so serendipitous because there were certain things that like totally popped out at me that screamed fun silly, lighthearted, um, cute. And so I put them all in my cart and uh, I'd like to share with you what those things are.
until recently my home has been uh, it, it's been evolving like the I don't think we ever really had a style but I, I I guess the aesthetic has been evolving as we've been as we've been there longer so it started out as just kind of like a, a mishmash of things because um, we took on all of my parents furniture when they moved into their independent living facility they had to let go of a lot of furniture so we took all of that on and it was lovely I had my mom's couch that she had reupholstered in this beautiful fabric and I got her credenza and her dining room table and um, a bookcase and I was so grateful to not have to buy a whole you know house full of furniture but as time passed um, hi puppy <laughs> as <laughs> That's okay. As time passed, what used to just be um, a mishmash of stuff from my mom's house is slowly becoming things that I've curated. But it's been hard for me to decide what I want my home to look like. Um, so I've generally been going for just like a really simple, minimalist, neutral um, aesthetic. Um, and it's peaceful minus the clutter but there's no life there's nothing fun going on in there and it's starting to bring me down so um, I intend to bring some life into my home I've already started in my master bedroom where I brought in some color to my bed I have pink and green pillows all different textures a beautiful quilt on there um, and that replaced just an all-white bed with a white comforter and white lacy pillows so I guess what I'm trying to say is there are places in my life where I can bring in um, where I can bring in some fun and life and um, what's the word it's not style that's not the word I'm looking for. Whimsy. There it is. Whoa, that took a long time to find that word. Bring in some fun and life and whimsy to my home. And um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to make those changes. Now, the only other problem is, is that I need to be making those changes while I deal with my ADHD, which... <laughs> causes me to get excited about a project excuse me or an idea and then I can just easily let that idea fall by the wayside so we'll see if I can actually see this through but the things that you saw that I purchased um, I hope to put up in my home and start having them be viewed by me and others in my home and pick up the energy in my life a bit